Hi everybody, I'm Brent Kelly with the StokerCon 2017 Video Squad. I'm here tonight talking with award-winning author and poet Linda Addison, who is an instructor at the StokerCon 17 Horror University this year. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to chat with me, Linda. My pleasure. What's up? <laughs> so you are um, t doing a workshop called Scary Forms, the World of Structured Poetry for All Writers. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what, what are we going to get out of your workshop? Well, I taught a, a version of this last year and it was so successful. I thought, um, let me just do a, a similar thing, except emphasize that it's not just for poets, which I did talk about last year, too. I think for me, it really comes out of my own need to have a, a poetic sound or some music in my own fiction. And so when I went about trying to figure out how to do that, and I thought about teaching a workshop, it all sort of came together that you don't have to be a poet to learn how a poem is structured and to somehow have that influence your writing in a way that makes your style, it can add a sort of music to it. So, uh, and we had a lot of fun in the last workshop, so I'm looking forward to the same thing here. So, um, could you say a little bit about the Asimov submission? Oh, sure. My great rejection story is one of my favorite. So um, in 1975, I think, Isaac Asimov started a lot, which is not that easy because he has like zillions of books or had. He's not around anymore. We actually became kind of friends, which is a whole other story. But um, so I started sending his magazine anything and everything that was even close to science fiction. I mean, even if there was a hint of it, it went. And I was getting rejected and rejected. And it was early on when I was getting sending anything out. So I'd send things other places. And half of what I sent out would get accepted. Write something, send it to him. So I saw, I met Frederick Poole at um, a New York is uh New York is Book Country Street Festival, and I was talking to him about being a published science fiction writer, and I didn't have much out. So he said, well, every science fiction writer has to write a Why the Dinosaurs Died story. And I was like, you know, all big-eyed, like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is new. This is the religion. I'm doing it. So I run home, and I write a 56-word story on Why the Dinosaurs Died. I was in a writer's group at the time, and I turned it in, and they're like, um, Linda, this is not a story. They knew I wrote poetry too. They were like, this is a poem. It's like, okay. So I go home and I turn it into a poem, right? Which is one of the play things that I do in the workshop that I teach. And that is I have people take sentences and turn them into poems back into sentences. It's also a way to kind of get unstuck if you feel like you're stuck while you're writing. But I digress. So I send my poem to Isaac Asimov's magazine and they accept it. <laughs> and this is my... First publication there after 15 years. Why did dinosaurs die? Oh, it was hysterical and wonderful. Time there was champagne after it, but you know. <laughs> well, um, what about um, the collages you talked about a little bit ago? Um, oh yeah, I've been playing with collages. I mean, I like scrapbooking anyway. And I've actually kind of have a vision, but I haven't quite figured out all the parts of it because I do enjoy very much reading my own work. So I, I did a collage for a poem called Precious that if you go to my website, you can find the link to the um, SFPA site. That's the Speculative Fiction, no, Science Fiction Poetry Association. I may be saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I'm a member and each October they let members send in readings of poems and I did a, um, a collage for it. So I kind of have, and I had a lot of fun with it. I kind of would love to be able to create like a, a box thing that you could, that I could sell that was like my collage, you push the button, you hear me read the poem, and then there's like the printout of the poem. I think that would be cool, but I haven't figured out all the parts and I think I needed a clone of myself because I'm kind of busy. So <laughs> what can you tell us about uh, anything new you might have coming down the line? Well, um, what's what's popping right now that I'm very excited about is um, a collection of uh, horror by black women. It's called Sycorax's Daughters. I'm one of the editors. There are three editors of the book. There's myself, Kenitra Brooks, and Susanna Morris. And it's being published by Cedar Grove Publishing. 
And it's just, I'm just excited about it because it's poetry, it's short stories, it, it's, it's, it goes into the past, it goes into the future, there's some techno stuff, there's just every kind of slant you can imagine, all in the realms of, you know, horror um, in different levels. But I, I'm, I'm so excited about the book. It's available for sale now, and we'll be having a book launch March 18th in Atlanta. So it's a very exciting project. And then the other project that I have this is coming up soon is, is I'm working with a filmmaker, Jamal Hodge, and he's taking one of my poems and turning it into a short film, which is amazing. And I'll be doing my first, you know, crowdfunding. Please send me five dollars, a dollar, a cent, or something. <laughs> But I'm excited about seeing um, visual arts uh, interpretations. So I have this other project, Seven Magpies, that's been burning, cooking in the background that I'm involved in too. So it's a whole other way of doing things, lodge and writing. And now, you know, to see someone create a, a visual expression of my work, I think it's just very, very, very cool. Definitely. Well, uh, I really uh, appreciate you taking the time to uh, have a little visit with me and uh, look forward to meeting you at StokerCon. Everybody should uh, get signed up for your workshop. Yeah, I want to see some of your stuff because, you know, we talked offline. It sounds pretty imaginative and cool. Some pretty wild stick figure drawings, I can tell you that. Bone chilling. I can't wait. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Linda. Take care.